What up, meal prepsters? It's Bobby, and last week I asked you what you guys wanna see for the next meal prep, and you overwhelmingly said, breakfast meal prep, Bobby, and I am gonna listen to you, but I'm gonna do it in such a healthy, delicious, and easy way that you might actually look forward to getting up early the next morning to get this in your belly because we are making an egg frittata loaded with vegetables, herbs, and a little bit of cheese. Quinoa power muffins loaded with pecans, raisins, carrots. They're so moist and so healthy. And bulletproof coffee, the tastiest and quite possibly healthiest coffee you can possibly drink. So if you wanna join the community, hook a brother up and subscribe to my channel. I have new meal preps every Friday and I want you to be a part of them. Let's start with our quinoa power muffins. So in front of me, I have one cup of all-purpose flour with a pinch of salt and half a teaspoon of baking powder. To that, I'm gonna add just over a quarter cup of light brown sugar and give it a nice mix up. Now here's the deal, y'all. If Bobby's baking, then you best know the recipe is so easy that anyone out there can do it. Now it's time to load these with a bunch of deliciousness. So I'm gonna grab one cup of cooked quinoa and add that gonna add nice protein and some antioxidants. Next up, a third of a cup of raisins, then a half a cup of grated carrots. The carrots are gonna bring some nice sweetness to the muffins and add a lot of moisture. For some nice crunch, a third of a cup of chopped and toasted pecans, and then half a tablespoon of flax seeds. These guys are crazy high in antioxidants, plus they're gonna add a little bit of crunch, and you guys know that I'm a certified crunchaholic. Now mix this up really thoroughly so everything's combined. So we can consider this our dry team when it comes to baking. And the reason why I'm mixing it up now is so the flour coats all the mix-ins. If we don't do this, all the ingredients are gonna to fall to the bottom of the muffins and they're gonna be delicious, but they're gonna be bottom heavy. By coating them in the flour, they stay suspended in the muffin from top to bottom. All right, the dry team is done. Let's swap it out and work on the wet team. Let's start by lightly beating one egg. Then add a teaspoon of vanilla extract three tablespoons of coconut oil, which is a heart healthy oil. Give it a quick little mix. Now to make these muffins worthy of their power name, I'm gonna add half a cup of Greek yogurt. It's really gonna add some great protein and moisture. And last but not least, half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now the cool thing about this recipe is that we're not using any liquid, we're just using the Greek yogurt. And by adding the baking soda, check it out. It's bubbling and rising. Rise my child, rise! That is gonna give crazy lift to our muffins and make them light and airy and delicious. Now baking, my friends, has certain rules and whenever you have two batters, the wet team always gets poured over the dry, so I ain't gonna break no rules today. And then go ahead and thoroughly mix it. At first, you're gonna think the mixture is a little too dry. And you're gonna be like, curse that Bobby, he totally screwed me here. But then you keep mixing it and you realize there's plenty of moisture to go around and you're back to being like, damn, that Bobby's cool as hell. He's my BFF after all. So just stir it until it gets nice and thoroughly coated. Now, when I said loaded, I meant it. You cannot get any more deliciousness in there. So push that aside and grab a muffin tray. Now I'm using a nonstick one, so you don't have to use any spray, but if you're not using one, definitely spray it and put a little bit of flour in there as insurance, that way they don't stick to the bottom. And then go ahead and scoop some batter and fill up your muffin tins. And make sure you fill them up all the way to the top. This batter makes enough for six muffins, so you can have an extra one. All right, next I'm gonna grab some more of these flax seeds and just sprinkle it and make it rain on top for a little bit of crunch. These power muffins go in a 350 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. For the veggie frittata, I have a large nonstick pan preheating over medium heat. If you don't have a nonstick pan, guess what? You gotta get one because it's the only way to cook eggs. I'll put a link to a cheap, good one in the description box over on Amazon. I highly recommend it. To my pan, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil and then reach for a whole bunch of orange peppers, zucchini, and red onions. Let's go in with about a half a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Now food is all about how you sell it. If you're telling someone you're making a veggie omelet, I would get kind of excited. But if you tell someone you're making a veggie frittata with pecorino romano cheese and fresh herbs, that sounds sexy. All right, it's been seven minutes. Check out the vegetables. They're nice and soft, but I think they need another few minutes. While that's doing its thing, I'm gonna grab half a cup of canned chickpeas that are unsalted. Make sure they're unsalted because you wanna control the amount of salt in your frittata. It may seem a tad unusual to put chickpeas in a frittata, but a few weeks ago, I had a lone can of chickpeas sitting on the shelf, just staring at me for like a week. So I said, why not? I tossed it on my frittata and it adds a real nice bite, some texture, and I've never gone back. So I think you're gonna like it too. 
I've got 12 eggs in front of me. And when it comes to the perfect frittata, it's all about whipping it. Whip it real good, y'all. So take a whisk and literally beat the crap out of this for a good minute. The more air we get in now, the lighter and creamier our frittata is gonna be later. Now add about a tablespoon of freshly chopped parsley, a tablespoon of freshly chopped dill, half a teaspoon of salt, and a few cracks of pepper. I'm gonna give it one last mix up. Now this is where our omelet gets serious or our frittata con veduri pecorino romano. Add the eggs to the pan and then immediately grab your spatula and start stirring. So I have the heat over medium right now and I'm gonna keep stirring for about three to four minutes. And the reason why I'm doing this is small curds are the key to a creamy, silky frittata. So if I have this over medium high heat or just too high heat in general and I don't stir, you're gonna get chunky monkey, big chunks of egg curds, and that does not give you a silky frittata. So by keeping it over medium, medium low heat and constantly stirring or agitating the egg curds, you keep them small and silky. And that is your culinary dork moment of the day, brought to you by Bobby. Okay, that means the muffins are done, which means I'm in a predicament because I just told y'all, you can't stop stirring this. So don't do this at home, but really quickly, go back to the oven. Now you know these guys are done when you put a toothpick in there and it comes out clean, just like that. So grab these out. Now this, my friends, is what the bakers call GBD. Golden brown and delicious. Look at those muffins. Those are so good. They have to cool for about five to 10 minutes. Then we'll pop them out of the tin, let them cool another five minutes, and then in the belly. All right, back to the frittata. Now see what's going on here? As the heat starts to go through the pan, you're getting these flecks or these curds. And as I'm stirring them, they're getting broken up. Sometimes you get this. This is what I call a chunky monkey. And yes, that is a culinary term. We don't want those. So what we do is boom, we attack them and obliterate them. And that's why we're cooking it over medium low, medium heat. All right, now see the consistency of the eggs? Now is the time to kill the heat on the pan. Then I'm gonna grab some of my favorite cheese. This is aged Pecorino Romano. It's actually really low in fat and calories because it's aged, so a lot of the moisture or the milk is evaporated. So go ahead and grate over about a tablespoon or two. It's gonna add a nice cheesy, nutty flavor and form a crust in the oven. <laughs> and then last but not least, I have some oven-dried tomatoes. This is my take on kind of sun-dried tomatoes, but it's done in like 45 minutes, but it has that rich, intense tomato flavor. So just go ahead and place it anywhere on top of the frittata. Now bump the heat up to 400 degrees on the oven and put this guy in there for about seven to 10 minutes. Let's pop all the muffins out of the tin, put them on a clean plate. And then there is the case of the six one, which I did say goes to you if you're a good boy. And I'm pretty sure I've been a good boy, so let's break into this guy. Did I say loaded or did I say loaded, y'all? You guys, honestly, so moist, so creamy from the Greek yogurt, the coconut oil. There's so much texture, flavor going on here, kind of crispy on the outside. And if you guys follow me on the Flav City Snapchat or Instagram story, you can get a sneak peek of what I'm gonna make every Friday on YouTube because we were doing R&D all week long for these muffins. And I'm pretty sure the hard work paid off because these are bomb. I needed one more bite. Now I gotta check on the frittata. Egg McMuffin sandwich ain't got nothing on this, guys. Get up in this deliciousness. The cheese formed a really nice crust. All those herbs are popping throughout. Now, you guys may have noticed that playing with my food is my favorite thing to do. So, scooping this guy out here is so much fun. Just use a rubber spatula. Go around the outside just to loosen it up in case it's stuck. And then shake it out right onto the cutting board. Look at that. How cool is that, you guys? It's like a giant pizza pie that's actually good for you and you feel a lot better when you eat this for breakfast instead of leftover cold pizza, I'm telling you. Now, the only thing left to do is make my bulletproof coffee. If you haven't had it yet, be prepared to have your culinary mind blown. This stuff is so easy to make. This is how you do it. Add one cup of hot coffee to a blender, along with half a tablespoon of ghee or clarified butter, half a tablespoon of coconut oil, then put the lid on the blender and cover it securely with a towel. Blend on high for one minute and you're all done. The reason why this elixir of the gods is so good for you is twofold. Number one, the fat emulsifies with the coffee in the blender. So you get a slower release of caffeine. So instead of being all hopped up in the morning, you get a slow release all day. But most importantly is number two, 
this makes you feel fuller longer. So when you eat it with a meal, especially this meal, it makes you feel full, honestly, till lunch or through lunch. I've done it in the past. It's a great way to satiate your hunger and not pull over to the side of the road and have a donut. Let's slice this guy into equal pieces here. Perfect. And then one last snow shower of Pecorino Romano. Dust it from the heavens. Check out all those marbled flecks of chickpeas, herbs, all the veggies in there. You can be driving to work, pumping some country music on the tunes, one hand on the wheel, one hand eating your frittata. We've never had a better or tastier commute to work. You guys, it's silky and custard-like. All those veggies are popping. The herbs and the cheese are adding so much flavor. Let us build our meal prep containers for the week. Grab one of the slices here, tuck it in the container, top it off with another one. Grab a quinoa power muffin, tuck that guy in there. There it is, you guys. All my containers are done. Now when it comes to the all important storage and reheating instructions, which you guys had a ton of questions about, cooked eggs can stay in the fridge for three days. Otherwise, put them in the freezer for up to three months. And when it comes time to eat them, either put them in a microwave for 30 seconds or the oven for a few minutes. For the quinoa power muffins, just put them in a zip top bag and keep them on the counter all week long. So there you go, guys. The recipe is down below in the description box. Make it, post the recipe online, and tag me on social media so I can see your creations. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel for new meal preps every Friday morning. If you want to see some more awesome, healthy meal prep recipes, check out the videos below me. But I will see you next week. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking. Later, guys.